Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today and got a new mower. Uh, I know I, I get asked this a lot, Pete, why you get so many new mowers? And um, really simple, I own a lawn care company. We have uh, three, four maintenance crews, maintenance meaning they go out to a property, mow and do the whole nine yards. I like to rotate my stuff out, keep new equipment you know, in-house newer equipment and so when we get to a certain time on the mower i kind of get rid of it sell it replace it with a new one as far as push mowers go we've been using the y bravo and have had exceptional uh, results with it i mean the guys love them they don't break they hold up to day in and day out use and uh but they're getting some age on them now and so i'm considering swapping them out for a different push mower and this was on my radar so that's kind of why uh you see me with so many different mowers uh, and what i do is i will purchase one i went to my dealer uh, this is actually the first one that my dealer got i emailed him two months ago to get in line for it and uh fortunately this was the very first one uh that they they got they put it together i went over bought the thing just like anybody else would buy it so it finally come in and they got it all put together and went over and picked it up the other day and i'll keep it here at the house and use it all season long here at my house might send it off with a crew and you know let them see but basically i want to see what the machine's about you know i don't i don't want to just go out uh, the machine cost me $2,300, $2,350, something like that. So I don't want to really go out and buy four of these at $2,300 and then not like them. So I'll get one. If it turns out I don't like it, then I'll sell it. Somebody will buy it. So uh, if we do like it, then I'll weigh out the cost and all that kind of thing. And, you know, we might, might add these to the mowing crews. I don't know. So that, that's really in a nutshell why, you know, I have different mowers all the time. So why take the time and make a video on it? Well, I know there's business owners out there that you may be interested in this and you value my opinion, you trust me, and you want a straight up, uh, no nonsense type of, yeah, it's good or no, it's not type of, I hate to call it reviews, but I guess that's what it is. I'm actually reviewing it. I'm, I'm more, more like showing you what it's capable of and what it does and give you my feedback. And I guess that is a review, isn't it? And then you can make your mind up whether it's something you want to uh, look at or not. Um, homeowner? Maybe? DIY homeowner? Uh, $2,300 for a 30 inch push mower? I think you'd really have to be dialed into your yard uh, to want to spend that kind of money on a push mower. Uh, that, that's a little high. I know that Toro Time Master, what are they, a grand or so? So this is over the uh, double and then some. Um, obviously, this is full-blown commercial grade. I mean, it is built. It's, it's a little bit heavy that way. Not heavy at all this way. Uh, it is built like an army tank. Matter of fact, they've got a sticker right here on this front that says military grade steel. I'll agree with that. It's literally built like a little army tank. It is super tough. Um, I can't say enough for the build quality on it. It's built exceptionally well. Now, one thing I did do I got the mower here at the house yesterday, went out and washed it, gave it a really good clean job. And just like I did with my right uh, walk behind, I put the ceramic coating on it. I've had really, really good luck with that, with my right, with keeping it clean. It cleans so much easier now. So I took my Skag 30 right here. I did the exact same thing, done it while it was brand new. That way the ceramic coating would really take well and you know we'll kind of monitor this mower throughout the season and see how it holds up see how much easier it is to clean and that kind of thing and uh, I, I'm just I'm really liking that ceramic coating on these mowers so first thing I did was check the actual height and see here I got it on four inches and that actually is a true 
four inches when you take a tape measure and measure from a flat surface to the blade to the cutting edge is actually a true four inches i also measured it on five and it's a true five inches so going off that i'm assuming the rest of them's accurate as well the way you adjust the height you grab this and this actually pushes pretty easy i mean look at how look at how easy that pushes right there and then once you do that you pull this pin out and whatever you know your setting is i got a five four and three quarter four and a half four and a quarter looks like quarter inch increments from five inches down to one and a half and then let's say i was going to cut on one and a half i'd come back here put that in and let her go and she drops on down pretty low the motor is a Kohler Command uh, something. I don't really get dialed into the motors. Kohler Command Pro something or another. Maybe you can read it right here for yourself and see what that is. Not 100% sure on the horsepower. When I fire it up, I kind of hear the kind of power it puts out. And uh, sounds good. We're, we're going to test it. I got some really thick ryegrass over there and some super thick uh, fescue that has just blown up from that protein application. So uh, we'll test out the power here in a minute. Gas tank is pretty good size. I, you know, I don't have the specs on it, but I'm gonna say this is over a gallon. Uh, just looking at the volume uh, size of it, I'm gonna say that's a little more than a gallon. Could be wrong, you might wanna read up on that. Get back here to the dash, pull this back, parking brake, and it holds really don't hold all that good now that I'm pushing it let's see if I pull it I don't like that on the parking brake I like it being convenient up here but I mean that's to me that's not a parking brake when it moves that easily now I don't want to throw them under the bus because I don't do that uh, this you know might be not quite set up or adjusted right I don't know I'll give it the benefit of the doubt is the way it's set up it's not breaking at all you basically pull this back and you pull this down and that's going to engage the blades let it go snaps right back into place hour meter which is pretty cool here's the throttle right here and here's the self propel portion of it and it is like a variable speed so if i pull it real easy i go a little slow I pull it more i go faster 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 uh, top speed it'll get on down the road it, it moves pretty good with top speed i do like the pull rope being right here up here instead of having to reach down here and pull it's kind of convenient right here that's a nice feature so i read some of the comments on my instagram which is at gci turf services and found that some people didn't like the bagger uh, i think I, I think my one complaint with the bagger would be i would uh, i would think it would be a little bigger you know what i mean this is a pretty beefy mower i mean it's uh it's got good metal on it it's it's good and thick everywhere it's made nice the tires are crazy beefy and uh they look like they'll last forever but the bagger's a little ooh, leaves a little to be desired you know what i'm saying uh, I'm sure their engineers do the weight and all that and make sure the thing stays balanced out and blah, blah, blah. But you would just think by looking at it, it might be a little bit bigger than this and hold a little bit more material. But uh, I'm not, I've yet to mow with it, so we'll see how it mows. It may pack the turf in here super, super tight so that they can get away with a smaller bagger. I am not, you know, won't know that until I mow with it. So back here where it discharges into the bagging system, uh, I also ceramic coated all of this in here so it would flow a little easier. Uh, really big, I like that. Really, really good size there. Shouldn't ever have any issues with that clogging up. Uh, take this plate off right here. That way you can access the uh, transmission and that kind of thing. So on my Instagram, they also, uh, I read that had trouble putting the bagger on okay so you got a little latch here and a little notch here and then you got that little knob right there and basically you come right in here and 
uh, it's kind of fit right in there just like that it goes on um, I'm gonna kind of go halfway with you on that uh, yeah it is a little difficult to get on it is it takes you know it's very precise you really have to get it in there just right and lock it down but I also think that's one of the things that makes it uh, cool and makes it nice is that it is a very very tight fit you see right here along this edge right here I mean the bagger is I mean tucked up right on that metal and uh, that way you don't have anything blowing out and that kind of thing and again that's kind of a you know yeah it's good and yeah it's bad you know, yeah you would want it to go on a little easier simpler for efficiency reasons and just for ease of use but at the same time you want things to fit very nice and snugly and uh snugly and that's actually i kind of like that that it's a really good tight fit so i'm gonna bag the turf today to see what the bagging capabilities are this little thing right here oh that's got some tension on it that little thing right there pops up and this right here this plate would just kind of pop out like that and then if you wanted to side discharge it you would leave that off and put the mulch plug in back there and it would side discharge but i'm going to bag this today so that just goes in there on that little latch there and clip her down and it's in there really firmly that's not going anywhere the wheels and tires i have to say are extremely nice and uh that's that's heavy duty stuff right there. obviously no air fitting on a push mower so it's solid rubber and uh super heavy duty front one is the same way just a little bit smaller and of course if you want to access your pulleys and belt and stuff like that you just unscrew these two little knobs here and this this black plate comes off really clean up under there and you can see it just kind of pops off like so and you can see the pulley tensioner right here belt and all that looks really clean and really simple and you know i like that kind of thing so when we go up under the deck that's pretty nice you just lean it back and it just kind of stays there on its own i got dual blades right here and actually uh even ceramic coated the blades just to kind of see what happens with that i don't know what'll happen but we'll see oh that's cool look at the sun and there's your transmission back there there's your chute right here and it's just clean i mean there's not much more I can say about that. It's just a clean design. Uh, the thing seems to have pretty good power. Of course, we're going to find that out here in a second. Uh, overall, first look at it, you know, I'm kind of impressed. So you can see what I'm working with. This is some super dense. I mean, that stuff is thick as a hair on a dog's back. Look at that right there. Good damn morning. That was the fescue over there, and we we'll come over here to the rye grass and look at that. Look, I can probably hide my fingers in that joint. Look at that. That's just thick as all get out, man. So we got a few different cutting heights, and we'll try it out. Uh, let's mow. This only goes down to one and a half. Let's see. Uh, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a big problem right there. All right, so let me show you a little problem I found. I'm at one and a half at the lowest setting I can go. Now I raised it up so you could see this, but see how this piece of metal drops down? And, and you know, the line at the bottom of the deck doesn't continue straight across. 
I don't know if that's for strength reasons or what. I have no clue why it's like that. But when I go to low mow and go all the way down, that is dragging the dirt. So that's a big issue. Uh, I'm going to drop it down and try it. And let's see what happens. And if I have to change my height, I will. I'm curious to see what will happen low mowing grass and you have this down all the way and you can see it's the same way over here on the other side this little tab kind of drops down my guess is that's to strengthen the bottom of the deck up maybe not sure uh, let's try it and see what happens So sure I like that it is really making the mower struggle to propel forward because the, you know this bluegrass is so thick right here you can see see right here that's bending the turf over right there and it's really causing a lot of friction going forward it's mowing fine it's handling that part fine but this is creating a drag on the mower uh, it would probably be better if that was straight across that way for low mo guys the deck would you know set completely flush on the ground so uh ugh, not liking that part <laughs> two and a half inches really nice clean cut and obviously you got to expect that with a brand new mower the vacuum on it's really good seems to really stand the turf up and got a little bit of striping action going on right there i don't think i got room for my big league lawn roller on the back uh, the bag kind of sets a little low not sure if I can make that work. I'm gonna take the one off my old X Mark 30 and see if I can make it fit on there. And you know, it'll stripe like a champion in. So like, subscribe, and share and tell all your buddies. Pete got a Skag 30 and he's gonna be showing it uh, a lot this year just because it's what I'm gonna use the mow back here with. Uh, I can't mow, I can't do my low mow with it. It's uh, these two little tabs back here kind of biting the turf and causing it to uh, not want to go forward as easily as it does when you know the decks up off the ground so i don't like it one bit um uh you know i don't know how many people would buy this to make to mow low with um you know that's different strokes for different folks i guess uh but back here that's what i'm trying to do and it's not going to work for back here so I can get my other mower out and do that. Uh, power, uh, I don't know if you could hear it in the video, but yet bogged down a little bit. But in defense of the mower, I just fertilized the other day. Uh, the grass hadn't been mowed in five days, so it's super thick and super bushy, and it is in its prime right now. It's very dense turf. So I don't know that any mower I'd have took out there, it would probably back, bog down a little bit. But that was only when I tried to go a little faster, okay? You know, at normal speed, it seemed to cut the grass just fine. So, you know, I think, I think it's powered correctly uh, for the size of the deck. That's one of the issues I've had with some of the other 30 inch mowers in the past is they're severely underpowered in my opinion. And this one seems to have pretty dang good power uh, for a 30 inch mower. It seems to uh, mulch up the clippings, chop up the clippings pretty good. So they pack in here pretty nice. Uh, that's not too bad right there. I think my favorite thing about it is obviously the width of the deck. I like having that extra uh, cutting width there. I really like the height adjustment where you push this forward change your height that's really really nice the handlebars seem to be pretty 
uh, ergonomic and pretty, you know, intuitive. They're not that hard to work other than your little parking brake here that still ain't right. So I'll have to look at that. It could be as simple as an adjustment, okay? There is an adjustment right here, and it could be a simple adjustment to tighten that down some. For those of you who have trailers and you haul your mowers on a trailer, there are a couple of tie down points on the front. At least that's what that looks like. All right, maintenance on the mower. I, I meant to show you this, but I didn't. You gotta see it. This is super cool. Here's where you change the oil. There's a drain tube that goes down there. And basically you'd raise it all the way up, set it on setting five, jack it up off the ground, slide your little pan up under here and loosen this nut and the oil runs out. At least that's the way I understand it works. So that is super convenient. It won't make a mess everywhere. And while you do that, uh, I can't remember if it's either this one or this one. It's one of the two. You loosen this a little bit and it allows the oil out of the oil filter to drain out too. So when you pop your oil filter off, you know, you don't make a mess all over your nice shiny orange paint. And let's talk about this orange paint. <laughs> I'm, uh, again, Skag, absolutely no offense intended, but me personally, uh, my personal preference, I am not a fan of that orange paint. Uh, matter of fact, the right mowers, that bright yellow, I'm not a fan of the bright yellow. Uh, X mark, eh, I'm okay, I'm kind of okay with the red. Uh, I'm just not a bright color lawnmower guy. Obviously, this is the color of their brand and the color they choose, and that's completely fine, and I respect that 100%, but personally, I'm not a fan of the color of it. If I owned a company that made a lawnmower and painted lawnmowers, I would probably want my mowers to be like a dark gray color, uh, you know, maybe a pewter dark gray, and then every the highlights on it black, kind of, you know, like everything else black. And it's just just personal opinion is all that is. It doesn't doesn't make the color wrong. It don't make it right. It just makes it. I don't like it. Yeah, it is what it is. So I honestly think it's a good mower. I, I think it's pretty strong. Uh, I'll obviously give you some more feedback as we get into the year and I put more hours on it. Uh, I'm kind of iffy on that bag now. Um, the one thing I have noticed the more, and, and this may be why the bag is smaller, is the more material I get in, obviously it's gonna make the front end lighter. And, and I could actually kind of feel it wanting to bounce a little bit and hop a little bit. So that's more than likely the reasoning for the smaller bagger. Um, but, you know, it's kind of one of them give and take kind of deals. I don't know if they have a weight kit you can put on the front or what. And, you know, I don't know. That, that's probably my only complaint with the mower after using it, you know, six or eight minutes is the the bagger um, again it goes on it's kind of tight getting it on but again that's kind of uh, you know that's kind of a, a positive and a negative in a way uh, the dash is super cool laid out really really clean and really nice uh, I like these bars right here that kind of protect the engine uh, from getting bumped up and that kind of thing uh, it's a good mower it's well built that's uh, that's really all I can say about it. It's a really, really well-built mower. And um, I'm sure the, I, this is the first Skag I've ever owned in my life. Uh, I'm sure the ride-ons and stand-ons are kind of the same way. I'm sure they take pride in what they do. And um, they're built uh, all the same. And let's see right here. That's got a USA sign on it, so I'm assuming uh, all of the machine is made in the USA, which would be an exceptional thing. So, there you go. That's my two cent on this Skag 30. I'm gonna finish mowing this, and my wife and kids, we're going to get Japanese tonight where they cook it up, chop it up in front of you, so I'm ready to go do that. 
and um, I hope this video was informative in some type of way or something. Hopefully I said something that either makes you like the machine or don't like the machine or helps you make your mind up one way or the other. Again, that's really the only reason I've done this. I hate to see somebody go buy something and then they don't like it. And you know, they didn't get a honest review on it. And I, I feel like that's what I try to give you is just be straightforward with the machine. And that's another reason I buy my stuff. Okay, I don't, I don't like, I don't take free things. I don't accept free things from companies. Um, and I had that one spreader deal, but that's kind of different. And that's another reason I buy my mowers. I don't feel like if a company sends me a mower, you know, for free, hey, go make a video on it. And I, I feel like I have to say all positive. I can't be critical of the machine if I feel like I want to be. And so, you know, I buy them myself. And of course, we use them. So uh, it's a good mower. I like it. Appreciate you watching. I'll check you later.